uh, one of the things that's getting lost in um, all this hubbub these days, and and, and from day uh, day one of the Trump administration, I think I can say this safely, I thought there was something very, very fishy about what was going on with the inauguration. They raised a tremendous amount of money, and they didn't really seem to have like commensurate production value. And it was a buddy of Melania Trump's who was in charge, who got paid something like she got paid like, I don't know, like $30 million as like a consulting. I'm, I don't have the numbers exactly in front of me. So uh, that may be, um, you know, an exaggeration, but it was, it was, it was a lot. Um, her name was Stephanie Winston Walkoff. She had an interview with ABC News the other night. Uh, she says the U S attorney's office in the Southern district of New York and local attorney generals in New Jersey and Washington, DC are investigating, um, the financing of the inauguration. She wrote a book apparently, uh, called Melania and me, you know, this is the thing where you like, you know, if you're, if you're a, a dubious person, your friends are probably a little bit dubious too. <laughs> and apparently they, they tape record you uh, on all your conversations. Now I do that uh, with everybody I talk to on this show, I record, uh, but you're aware of it. I mean, you're staring into yeah. a camera. So, uh, but here is, um, Wolkoff has said previously that she was thrown under the bus by the Trump administration after the inaugural committee spending came under scrutiny in 2018. Um, in her forthcoming book, she said she was made into the cover girl for the inauguration shenanigans. Uh, the committee raised over $107 million, and she supposedly received like an inordinate amount of that as a consultant. And it sounds like, and I haven't read the book, but that scenario sounds like she was like a shell company right. for a lot of people getting paid. <laughs> and like she says, she was the cover girl. Um here is a uh, recording that she released uh, that she made between uh, Trump and Melania Trump and herself. And um, in this instance, Melania Trump comes out as an ally of ours in the war on Christmas. They say I'm, I'm complicit. I'm the same like him. I support him. I don't no. say enough. I don't do enough. No. Where, where I am, I put the, I'm working like a Asthma, asthma, I know. The Christmas stuff that, you know, who gives a f about the Christmas stuff and decoration, but I need to do it, right? Yeah, but go ahead, 100%, you have and no then, choice. And, okay, and then I do it, and I say that I'm working on Christmas, uh, planning for the Christmas, and they said, oh, what about the children that they were separated? Give me a break. Don't, uh, where, where they were saying anything when Obama did that? I know. They, they, I cannot go... I I was trying to get the, the kid reunited with the mom. I, I, I didn't have a chance. It needs to go through the process and through the law. But here's my thing. You hear what you just said? But instead of that, if, if you just, your messaging, you you were so loved. You they were. would not do the story. We put it out. They would not do the story. I'm telling you. You would not believe it. They mm. would not do the story because no, no. they are not, they would not do the story because they, they, are, they are against us because they are liberal media. Yeah, if I go to Fox, they will do the story. I don't want to go to Fox. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, on some level, there's a couple of things. The, here's my top line for that. One is she believes all of it. Right. The liberal media, the the fact is, is that the Obama administration had different um, uh, disposition towards children and, and, and families in, in some respects, radically different. Um, she is very burdened, apparently, by doing the Christmas uh, decorations. Um, and she wants, uh, you know, positive stories being put out there, but the liberal media won't do it. And she doesn't want to go to Fox because, ooh, gross. <laughs> and, um, I, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's, you know, I think it's being characterized as, as something worse. Like she's obviously not like, I don't know. Like when she's talking about the story, like they wouldn't do the story. Like, is she talking about like they tried to do some like 
fluff story where it's like she pretended to reunite a family and they just wouldn't pick it up. I don't know what the story is, but my sense is from that snippet of the conversation that she had a, you know, story that's going to make her look good. Right. That they want to get out there and they can't place it anywhere because the liberal media and Fox is icky. Yeah. (laughs) Here's remember this uh, little moment. Um, I really don't care to you. Yes. That was the first thing I thought of. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe it's a story about that jacket because she did that around that time, didn't she? Yeah, but that that was a maybe it was after and it was response that jacket was response to the media <laughs> not placing her story because the jacket the message said there was menacing like I don't care what's happening with these kids in cages. <laughs> yeah, the timeline on that is this conversation was in July 2018 and the jacket was in October 2018. Oh, okay. So this was so a fallout from that or frustration maybe. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but she's definitely like, you know, when she was out there, you know, you can see footage of her uh, back in the day before uh, before she was first lady uh, on um, Joy Behar's show talking about, you know, she's a full on birther um, and sure. she's uh, she's true blue and believing it. I just I I have to admit I have um, I have some sympathies uh, now uh, because of how uh, worthless and frustrating as she thinks Christmas decorations are. Christmas decorations are hard, you know? You put them I up and know. then what? I don't know, and I'm happy not to know, but I appreciate the fact that she is so sure. anti-Christmas. <laughs> the last thing yeah. the Trump administration needed was an inter-war on Christmas uh, battle going into November with everything else that's going on. I know it. I know it. COVID uh, and now this. Yeah. Oh, a, it's... A, what what a Tokyo Rose basically? What is it? What are the what is that? What is, what is is it Tokyo Rose? Is that what you would call her if she's on War on Christmas? She's Tokyo Rose. I found it interesting how she stressed the uh, talking point about Obama did child separations too, as if there is no difference in uh, degree there or uh, policy. Yeah, right. that's why she's. She, I mean, that's the thing is that I think that we tend to assume that they um, know how misinformed they are but they don't i think sure. a lot of them you know full i mean i think like there there was a report uh, out um that where do i have it here i think it was in the new york times in the wake of the uh in the wake of the reports of everybody who's got coronavirus in the um in the white house that uh aids started to wear masks the next day in the white house. And it's like, wait, what? Like they, like they, they, they became believers. Right. <laughs> like at that point, like, Oh, I guess this is real. Like that, that it wasn't, that it wasn't just sort of a, uh, a sign of virility that they didn't wear masks, that they actually had some like measure of just disbelief that it was helpful in any way to wear a mask. Um, Oh, here it is. This is from the New York Times. On Wednesday evening, a small coterie of advisors spoke with one another about Ms. Hicks' symptoms as they flew home aboard Air Force One. Ms. Hicks was isolated in a separate cabin. So they didn't, she had tested um, uh, uh, negative, I think it was on uh, Tuesday. Uh, And I think they were waiting for the test to come back on Wednesday when she started feeling bad. And so they put her in a uh, basically a sequestered area of the uh, of Air Force One. She exited from the back of the plane as opposed to the front. By Thursday, it was clear that something unusual was happening at the White House. Aide said several staff members who have avoided masks were suddenly wearing them. So she tested negative for COVID on Wednesday morning. She developed symptoms during the day, received a second test, which came back positive. The White House knew about this Wednesday evening. Trump still had his fundraiser on Thursday. How just like, man, the, you know, my guess is Donald Trump ends up being, you know, fine. Maybe he gets sniffles. And one of those high dollar fundraisers walks home with a commemorative case of coronavirus uh, that ends up maybe uh, debilitating them, if not killing them. 
right just incredibly like man it's just when i think of how careful and you know how what kind of obligation you feel to like the people you know who who are you know sort of like within your uh, immediate uh, you know a pod as it were or whatever you want to call it and and expanded it's just amazing to me yeah it's like there's no if you have like you know any sense of like ethics as a human being like there's nothing you know this pandemic it's like it 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 messes with your mind as it should because like you're thinking like 10 steps ahead of like okay like i could go to this small gathering but like what if somebody gets it? They'll probably be fine. But what if they give it, give it to this person? Uh, like their health isn't the best. Like, you know, it's like you're always mapping out how you could potentially kill someone. <laughs> and, and Yes. I mean, a, a, I think a thought that, I mean, that's exactly the point. Like, I think like a thoughtful sort of like non sociopathic human being right. does that. You think about like, you know, what are the, what are the potential implications of my actions on other people. And it's like, look, we can't do that for every single thing, you know, that, that goes about, but right now everybody is aware that there's a pandemic. And so you operate, you know, you, you respond to that. 